My name is Andreas Baumbach and I'm here to talk to you a bit about a bit more about what Mihai started in the in his talk in the morning or discussed in his talk in the morning. What can we do or what could we mean by co uh, doing computation with spice? And I don't know how well your math is. Uh, who of you knows based on inference? Okay, not so many. Uh, for our purposes, just say that basic inference means uh, deciding what kind of uh, what kind of explanation is the best one given the data you have. For example, if you take the uh, this example here, this picture is consistent both with a uh, rabbit or with a duck interpretation. And what your brain does is it shows you that. It shows you the interpretation of either it being a duck or it being a rabbit. So in a way, it, it does produce samples. And if this here one is a rabbit and this one is a duck, then you would sample this is a rabbit, this is a rabbit, this is a rabbit. Now it's a duck, and now it's a duck. And in a way, we have to map this kind of sampling to what our brain is doing. And the model that we use is the LIF model, the leaky integrate and final. Model, and we need to somehow link the neuron state, which is defined by its membrane potential, to a binary state. Or at least we can do that. And we do that by simply saying a neuron is on when it has fired and is now refractory. And as long as it's refractory, the neuron is in the state 1. A network then produces a new sample each time a neuron fires. So this neuron has fired, so the network goes in the state 1, 1. This new one rele is released from the refractory time, so the network goes in the state zero one. This is the basic framework what we are doing, and this is a simple sampling unit where you can link one leaky integrate and fire new one to a single <coughs> random variable, binary random variable. Why is this interesting? Well, one point of the hardware. On the hardware, we have LF new ones, and we can perform sampling. And sampling is inherently a, a bad process because you need more, you, you're never sure that you're finished. So you need, a, uh, you need a long time to be quite sure that you have more or less accurately sampled your distribution. And the hardware is faster. So the hardware helps us here there because it produces more samples in less time. And this simulation here was 100 milliseconds in bio time, so 10 to the 5, and it took on Spikey exactly 10 milliseconds. So this helps us as long as we can control for the hardware parameters. And if you're interested in how we do that, please come and find me at the poster. The other idea or the other more interesting point then is to go to a more complex network. And a more complex network means introducing for us more layers. More layers means we can represent more complex structures and more complex structures in this case means re uh, recognizing image digits. Mihai already told you that, we, that our model achieves 97% accuracy. But the more interesting point is the generative part of it. So if you don't show it input, or if you show it only partial input, it samples faster. It goes faster through different digits, and it shows you more digits in the same time than abstract sampling does. So there is an inherent value in doing simulations, or uh, in, in researching sampling with biologically inspired network models, even though they are more complex or computationally inefficient on CPUs compared to abstract models. And finally, I come to the work that I'm doing. The point that Mihai made is neurons and spins, we don't both describe them as two-state systems. So if they are two-state systems, they have ensemble phenomena. And the question is, if they follow the same distributions, do they show the same phenomena? The answer is uh, up to a point. So this is a hysteresis curve for physicists, or for us, it's uh, the activity of a excitatorily connected neural network. If you inhibit it, uh, if, you, if you take away inhibition, then it, at some point it will start firing. It will continue firing until you inhibit it much, much stronger again, and then you turn it off again. This is exactly what a hysteresis curve for magnets looks like. But so in some way, we can reproduce phenomena for magnets. But when we go closer to critical phenomena, to critical points, 
and cool down our system, we would expect the system to either fall into an active state or an inactive state at some precise temperature. What we instead see is that we have a continuous rise of activity over temperature range and no uh, strict phase transition. This is due to the different interaction uh, shape between spins and muons and most uh, large-scale uh, phenomena or predictions that we have are based on essentially abstract neuron models which basically implement this rectangular interaction. And this result really should call into question whether we should use or should blindly trust those results because we found one phenomenon that is not reproduced. This is interesting, we have no idea, uh, we have some idea why, but we have no idea how to, um, to correctly predict this curve. And this is basically what my PhD thesis will be about. I'm pretty sure I, or at least I hope I have not confused you so much that you don't have any questions. Uh, please give me the chance to answer them and come and find me afterwards.